solve to problem 2. So, the following are given and then you're going to compute the accounts, receivable, marketable securities, fixed assets, then long-term debt. Okay. So, you have question number one. How much should be the accounts receivable? Okay. How much should be the accounts receivable before we will answer? How much is the accounts receivable? Okay, don't forget to write the account that is being answered. For example, if it's cash, so you write cash equals. Okay. How about question number two? What is your marketable securities? How much is the marketable securities? Okay, that's correct. That's 250,000. How about the fixed assets? All right. So that's 650,000 and our long-term debt Okay, so let us answer one by one. So first is um, the given. The given ratios will be the clue to how to answer the remaining items that are not given. So items that are not given, you have the accounts receivable, marketable securities, fixed assets, and long-term debt. So we will start with the uh, current ratio. The current ratio is... 2.5 times so that's current asset over current liability the current liability is given so therefore 2.5 equals 700,000 then you have your current asset so therefore the current asset is 700 times 2.5 that's 1,750,000. Next is, uh, we can use the RTO formula to extract our AR. So your RTO, you have your credit sales divided by AR, average AR. The RTO is given, so that's 1.25 times. The credit sales is also given, 3 million. Therefore, your AR Okay, so that's your AR is you have ah, sorry, the RTO sorry, this is not RTO day. 6 times day. 6 times correction 6 okay so you have 6 AR so 3 million divided by 6 that is 500,000 okay so we have 500,000 for number 1 next is to get your marketable security so we need to Identify if the other items in your current assets is already uh, given. You have first cash. We already have the cash. Then accounts receivable is already computed. Accounts receivable, 
uh, already solved, you have inventory is given. So therefore, we can compute the marketable securities. So that is 1 million 70 current assets. This is your current asset. And you deduct all other assets. You deduct the cash of 150, deduct the inventory, then we deduct the accounts receivable. So 1,750 1, 750 minus 150 minus 850 minus 500. So therefore, your marketable securities is 250,000. Next, for your fixed asset, we need to get your uh, total assets. So the total assets is not given, but we have the asset turnover. So your asset turnover is 1.25 times. Okay. 1.25. So the formula is net sales or net credit sales or net sales over total assets. So just, just net sales day. Net sales the given is 3 million okay, divided by total assets and this is equivalent to 1.25. So cross multiply so you can extract your total assets so 3 million divided by 1.25 so that's 2 million 400 so therefore your your fixed assets is a difference between your total assets and current assets so that's 2.4 million minus your current assets, which is 1.75 million. So that is 650,000. Okay. Then question number four what is our long-term debt so this is debt to assets ratio is given so that's to total asset so the debt to total asset is 40 percent and then our debt here is missing but we have your total assets computed earlier as 2.4 million. So therefore, our debt, total debt is 2,400,000 times 40%. So that's 960,000. But remember, this is total debt. We need to get the long-term portion. So since our current liabilities is given, so deduct 700,000. And then you will get 260,000. This is your long-term debt. Okay. So that's correct. That's 260,000. Now we'll proceed to the next one. So I'll use the problem for Kyle uh, Company. So here are some of the items that are required to be computed using a 365-day year. Okay, so we will start with number one. Okay, what is the earnings per share for number one? Can you write your answers in the chat box? Yes. Earnings per share is um, net income. Okay, what was given in the formula? So you have number 5 that's on page 16. Net income minus preferred dividends divided by the common stock outstanding. Okay. 
Uh, for basic uh, basic earnings per share, mang good, it's focused on the common shareholders equity. So that's why we need to deduct the preferred dividends. So what is only available for distribution for the common stock outstanding mana shay basihan sa earnings per share. Okay. So for this one, okay, what will be your answer? Okay, mom ni share earnings per share of common stock man, common stock. Because if you're not going to deduct the preferred dividends, so the presumption there would be you're going to distribute all of the net income to your common stockholders. So the earnings per share here for number one uh, only pertains for to the common stock. So therefore, you need to exclude the preferred dividends. What is your answer for number one? So the formula net income and how much is our net income? And then divide it by number of Average common equity. So that's in terms of number of shares. And then how do we know the number of shares here? So since the total uh, face amount or face value of the common stock is given and the par value is also given, so we can get the number of shares. Okay, what are your answers? <laughs> okay, common shares, common shares outstanding. Okay, CSO, common shares outstanding. How much is our net income? Net income here is 217. What is our preferred dividends? So it's mentioned here that no need to compute because it's already given. Okay. That 5,000 is for preferred dividends. Okay. So, 217 minus, okay, minus 5, 5 rate minus because this is in thousands. So, therefore, 140 in thousands, that's 140,000, 120,000, 100,000, 80,000. How many shares are outstanding here? If there are 200 or there is a total of 200,000 for the common stock divided by 10 par, so how many shares are there? How many shares are there? 200,000 divided by 10 peso par, how many shares are there? Okay, you have 20. So, 20 na po din po tong nato dere. So, if we remove the other zeros, then we'll also remove the zeros here. But if you were going to present it in total, okay, 217,000. So, ah, ito lang ni siya kompleto on para di maglibog. Okay, ano man siya. Pero pwede rin siya shortcut as long as you remove the same number of zeros. Okay, so 217,000. Shortcut lang di hapon. 217,000 minus 5,000. But at least 1,000 na ni siya. M divided by 20,000. Okay. So, this is 212,000 divided by 20,000. Okay. How much? Okay. That's 10.6. Remember, this is in peso. So, peso ni siya. Kay earnings. Ang atong numerator ani kay ano man, net income. So, therefore, pesos ni siya. So, that's 10.60 
pesos per share. So, 10 pesos and 60 centavos per share. Question number 2. Price earnings ratio. Price earnings ratio. Check. Yes. Because the number, or if you're going to compute the total face value of the common stock, it's equivalent to the number of shares times the par value. Kung sa ano pa na siya, kung sa inventory pa na siya, mura man na costing per share. So, kay shares man siya, when you sell a share, for example, you're going to sell your share for 20,000. Uh, not 20,000. For 20 pesos per share, so mag-debit ka o cash, 20 per share, for example, 1,000 shares na siya, 1,000 times 20, that's 20,000. But if you're going to credit the common stock or ordinary share, same naman na siya, common stock, that is still at par. 1,000 times uh, par value nga, okay, for wala, times 10. That would be 10,000. So, therefore, if mo appear sa imuhang books is 10,000 and then na share par value nga 10, it means that there are 1,000 shares. And then the remainder is your share premium and that would be 10,000. So, simply the difference between cash and your par value of the shares. So, if you want to know how many shares are there, you simply divide the face value or this is the par value of your shares divided by the par value. So, that is equivalent to the number of shares. The same goes with preferred stock. You divide 100,000, this is in pesos man, divided by the par value of 5, you will get the number of shares. Okay, next, price earnings. What's the formula for price earnings ratio? That's market price per share. Market price per share divided by the earnings per share. Is the market price per share given? So the market price per share is how much? What are your answers? Okay, is it given in the problem? Okay, so given here, 140. So 140 divided by EPS computed earlier, that's 10, okay, it's a 10.60. So, how much is the price earnings ratio? So, that's 13.21. 13.21 is to 1. So, every peso in your earnings per share, so there's market price of 13.21. Meaning, the market value of the shares is 13.21 times your EPS. So, taas siya o market value. Question number three. Okay, so if you're going to inter interpret also number one, so for every peso of, uh, or for every one day, for every one share invested by the owners, uh, he earns 10.60 pesos. So, mo ay nabalik sa iyahang uh, kada isa ka share nga gi invest. Question number three, dividend payout ratio. What's the formula for dividend payout ratio? That's dividend per share over uh, EPS. Dividend payout, payout ratio. So that's dividend per share over EPS. 
So, your EPS is already given. And then, how much is our dividend per share? Okay, how do we get the dividend per share? That is equivalent to, it depends on what type of dividend you're going to compute. If it's for preference share, then it, it depends on the dividends uh, distributed for preference shareholders. So, yeah, if it's for ordinary shares and dividends, so katurapong para sa ordinary shares. Remember, duha ba yaka types of shares dere ang na ay dividends na ay preferred na ay ordinary. Kaning 127, this is for both ordinary and preference. Unya, out of 127,000, 5,000 is for preferred dividends. So, how much is the dividend for the ordinary? How much is the dividend for the ordinary kung 5,000 ang para sa preferred? So, ang para sa ordinary, correct? That's 122. So, pila man ang dividend kada ordinary share. Remember that the EPS is uh, focused only for the common shareholders. So, therefore, ganipong dividend per share will focus only for the common shareholders. So, pinaman ang dividend sa kada isa ka share kung 122,000 ang dividend nga gidistribute sa ordinary. Pinaman kada isa. Pina kada isa ka share. Okay, so i-divide na to ang 122 divided by, pilagyan nito ganiha ka shares, divided by 20,000 shares. Okay, so 20,000. So that is 122 divided by 20, so that's 6.1. So, therefore, how much is our dividend payout? So, 6.1 divided by 10.60. 6.1, so 57.55%. Okay, so the dividends per earnings is 57.55%. So, this is how much you're returning to the owners, common shareholders, uh, in contrast to the earnings that they are receiving. So, 6.1 out of the 10.60 earnings. Question number 4, what is our dividend yield? What's the formula for dividend yield? Dividend per share over... Market price per share. How much is the answer for this one? So, this is already computed. 6.1 over 140. This is 0 0.044. Okay, 435 or so. 
zero point zero four three five seven. So that's four point sorry, four point thirty six. Okay, percent Venetia four three six or four point thirty six percent. Okay, next question number five. How much is the return on total assets? This is adjusted net income. So that's net income plus interest. times 1 minus tax rate. Okay. For a while. It's so bon. Okay. 1 minus tax rate. over average total assets. Okay, so what is our net income? Our net income is 217. How much is our interest? That's 50. So 50 times 1 minus tax, tax rate. The tax rate here is 30. So therefore, 1 minus 30% is 70%. So, 217 plus 50 times 0.70 divided by average total assets. You have 2,250 and 2,220. Two, two, two so average 2,250 plus 2,220 divided by 2. That's 2,235. So solve 50 times 70 plus 217 divided by 2235, that is 11.28%. Okay. Question number 6. Return on... Common stockholders' equity. So, common stockholders' equity naman siya. So, sa common na mag-focus. So, you have net income. Okay, over. What is our common stockholders' equity here? So, not only focus on common stock, but also up to the retained earnings. So, kana siya. Excluded ang preferred stock. That's our common stockholders equity. So, that's 217 divided by the sum of, okay, ano man siya? Average. Day. Average common stockholders equity. So, average ni mo ni sila. So, excluding 100,000 for year 2 and excluding 100,000 for year 1. So, that's 1, 3. Diba? 1, 3 and 1,210 divided by 2. So, that's 1, 2, 5, 5. So, 217 divided by 1, 2, 5, 5. That's 17.29% number 7, book value per share. Book value per share. How much is our book value per share? That's equivalent to your equity. Okay, this is still common equity divided by number of shares. So, our common equity here is for year 2, that's 1, 3, divided by common, no, shares, uh, common share, common share, common shares, right? common shares, 
common shareholders equity divided by the common shares or common stock. The common stock here is how many shares man to siya? 20. 20,000. So 1,300 divided by 20. So that's 65. So that is still in peso. Okay. So for every share, the book value is 65. Question number eight. So yun na ni, working capital. Working capital is current assets minus current liability. So 410 minus liabilities 390. That's 20. 20,000. Okay, again, this is 410 in thousands ni siya. 410,000, 390,000. So, 20,000 is our working capital. Next is current ratio. What is our current ratio? So, 410 divided by 390 that is 10 uh, no 1.05 1.05 number 10 what is the quick ratio for your quick ratio we're going to exclude the inventory and prepaid expenses. So, therefore, kanira. Okay? So, that's 260 divided by 390. Okay? So, that is 0.5. Six six so point sixty seven. Uh, sorry, point sixty seven or sixty six point sixty seven percent. Or sixty seven percent. Okay. Question number eleven. Okay, nagan nagan para bani RTO. What is our RTO? So credit sales. Credit sales of. 2,000 divided by average AR. Average AR is 120 plus 110 divided by 2. That's 115. So, 2,000 divided by 115. That's 17.39. Question number 12. So, let's continue lang niya siya ha. Question number 12. Average collection period. So, number of days, 365 divided by RTO. Our RTO is 17.39. So, 365 divided by RTO of 17.39. So, that's... 20.99 days or 21 days. 20.99 or 21 days. Question number 13. Inventory turnover. Cost of sales over average inventory. So, our average inventory, that's 100 plus 110 divided by 2, 105. So, 14 divided by 105 is 13.33 times. Fourteen, average sale period turnover in days. 
So that's 365 divided by the ITO. 365 divided by 13.33. That's 27.38 or 27 days. 27.38. Or 27 days. Question number 15. Times interest earned. Your EBIT. Your EBIT is here. The operating income. 360 divided by 50. The interest. That's 7.2 times. Then question number 16. Debt to equity ratio. Our debt here is... Total debt is 850. Then total equity is 14. So 850 divided by 14. That is 60.71%. If you like this video, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be updated with the latest video lessons. Thank you for watching.